The Dart language has several built-in types. The Dart language has special support for the following. Now, whenever they say they have special support, um, I don't I don't think that means that like these types have special support and others don't. I think it's just that in Dart, these are the built-in types. Um, and these are the ones that they support and you can expect it to just be there <laughs> and like they're not going away uh, that the dart team is going to like they're not removing numbers from dart um, so i think that's what special support means is they're just built in you don't have to like import another package or something um, they are not listed alphabetically they're listed kind of like in order of maybe like difficulty understanding, like numbers are pretty easy to understand. Um, I think strings, well, so numbers, <clears throat> you can have like an integer or a double. So these integers are like whole numbers. A double is something with a fraction. Um, both of these types, they kind of inherit probably from some, uh, they either inherit directly from object <clears throat> or they inherit from, like I know in Ruby, you can have, um, uh, numbers that inherit from the numeric class. Um, don't know off the top of my head if they do that in Dart, but um, those are the two types. Notice that these are um, lowercase, both of them. So if we were to go into DartPad, um, you see here like in this for loop that the DartPad starts you off with the integer i, they initialize it at zero and they give it a, a type. So this is the um, this is what a for loop looks like, where you have this um, this uh, variable uh, explicitly typed as an integer. I could call that a var, uh, but it's an int again, lowercase when you do that. Okay. Um, I bet if I did a double here, it might not like that. Let's find out. Oh, it worked, and there were no errors <laughs> or information, um, which was not. I mean, you could say object. I'm really surprised that double actually worked. Um, yeah, object is from dark core. It's not defined for the class object. Huh, that's interesting. So maybe... By putting var or int or double, you get access to that um, little operator less than. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I don't want to go too too deep there, uh, but those are the uh, the types of numbers. Okay, um, you have strings which are um, like in a form. If you enter your name uh, and and save it somewhere or an email address for an account that's typically stored as a string. It's just a collection of characters that you can type. Um, okay, Booleans are true or false. Again, this is kind of a lowercase. I, I typically think of these lowercase ones as like more primitive, uh, more basic um, for the language compared to these uh, uppercase ones. Uh, so bool is, is typically true or false, and that doesn't include null, which you'll see down here, the value null. Uh, lists are pretty common among uh, in programming languages. Uh, like in Ruby, we call them an array. Okay, so that's a, a collection of things. Um, they're just, you know, maybe you have a collection of strings or integers, um, and those are denoted by the square brackets. Um, a set um, I would have put map before set, so let's do maps real quick. Um, a map is the uh, the curly brace with a key value pair. Um, in Ruby, we call those hashes. Uh, and then a set kind of looks like a mix between a list and a map, where you have the curly braces here, uh, but you just have a collection of objects inside that set. Uh, a rune, they say it's often replaced by the characters API, so that's a language feature as well. Um, you, if you're using emojis, um, special characters, uh, you might have to use this, be familiar with runes. Otherwise, it's kind of obscure. Like when I first got into Dart, like I've never heard of runes. <laughs> okay. 
so we definitely don't use that term in, in Ruby that I've been there for the um, past three years that I've been doing that work. Uh, symbols, I don't think these are like Ruby symbols. Um, in fact, they're, they're down here so far. I, I don't think you really need to to worry about them. Again, these, these built-in types, we're going to go, be going through each of these uh, in depth. Uh, but this is the top level, what you need to know about them. Probably, probably be familiar with the first six um, maybe sets, maybe maps more than sets. I would say sets are maybe the least. Uh, but then also um, Dart is now what's called a null safe language. I think as of Dart 2.0 or 2.13, I forget. Um, but you'll want to be familiar with like what's null and what's not and how um, that concept uh, influences the language and the use of the language. Okay, so those are the, um, the types of built-in support. Uh, the support includes the ability to create objects using literals. For example, and here they have, this is a string, is a string literal, and true is a Boolean literal. If you're brand new to programming, like I was once, you read that and you, you think like, what is so special about characters between quotes and just a value? Okay, um, so I think that needs some, some explanation. If you're new, if you're coming from uh, where you're experienced with like what a string literal is, uh, but even for me, it's just like I I know that if I assign, <clears throat> let's say, a string to a value, to a variable, for example, this is a string. Let's assign that to some variable. It's a thing. Um, and we're going to say this is a string, and now I can just print the thing. Like. I never, I never, while I'm programming, think, oh, I need a string literal here. Um, so, so I, yeah, what you, what you need to know if you're going to actually be using Dart is just like, okay, this is what they call it. They call it a string literal. Like this, this is the nomenclature, the jargon, um, whereas this is the string variable. This thing uh, refers to this literal, like we, we literally have a string here. I guess is, is how I would think about that. Um, it's kind of like in uh, in English when you learn about prepositions and gerunds, uh, if I'm even saying that correctly. Like there's this nomenclature for what the language is, but on a daily use basis, when you're using the language, you don't think, oh, I need a gerund for this, or I need the past participle, um, <laughs> or the subjunctive imperative, or, or whatever that is. That's just names for what the language does. Um, you need a familiarity of just how to use it. Okay, so typically you'll see this thing on the left or the right. So for example, like this is a string. Okay, that's the string literal. This is the string data type for this variable. Um, if I had a bool, again, what they said is you can do something like this. Now this thing true, that is the, um, that's the, that's the Boolean literal, okay, and, and this variable of type bool um, has that value true, and we're, we're printing that um, instead of just like printing true here, which you, you could also do. I'm, I'm printing the literal value of true. Um, like I, I don't even need that anymore. But again, it's, it's not very useful, <clears throat> right? Um, unless you had some like wonky logic to get to this point. Um, so anyways, that's it's just what it's called. Okay, To me, it's you learn it and you forget it, kind of like gerunds and past participles. Just learn how to use the language. Okay, uh, Because every variable in Dart refers to an object, which is an instance of a class, you can usually use constructors to initialize variables. Okay, so I think this, this might be the, um, the as opposed to example. So some of the built-in types have their own constructors. For example, you can use the map constructor to create a map. So let's look at that. Let's create a map literal. So let's have a um, 
a map, and our variable is going to be called map literal. And we're literally going to have a map, you know, string uh, foo. Is this, I forget if this is the actual um, way to do this in Dart. Maybe it's that. Okay. Okay, so I have a key value pair. My key is, is the string foo, and my value is the string bar. Um, that's, that's what that is, okay? Now, this thing they're talking about here is, because every variable in Dart refers to an object, it's an instance of a class, you can use constructors. So for example, somewhere um, in the Dart code, there's a definition of like class map and then there's just like a whole bunch of logic okay there's all this code that makes the class map where we can like def you know use it right here on line two um, map probably has a constructor and constructors in dart look like something like this um, you know and they have a bunch of code maybe in here uh, to do something you might see a little colon kind of like logic weirdness going on that is that is the constructor inside of uh, a class i don't think we've gone over classes yet um, but basically instead of having a literal you can say map from constructor maybe so that's this is a map from a literal map from constructor and then that's going to be something like this um, I think older versions of of um, Dart would use the new keyword I think you can still do that let's do that just to be verbose for now uh, we'll call it map from constructor okay some of the built-in types have their own constructors some don't so you want to know which ones you can use like that and which ones that uh, you don't uh, you're not able to all right, some other types also have special roles in the Dart language. So they use this word special a lot. Built-in types. The Dart language has special support for the following. Um, and here, some other types also have special roles. I mean, you could just say <laughs> the Dart language has interesting support for the following without saying, like, what that is beyond like string literals and you know having literal values um, some other types also have interesting roles in the Dart language or special roles okay <clears throat> so you have an object and that's like everything in in Dart inherits from an object in Ruby we say everything is an object um, that inherits from object or basic object um, so it's the super class of all Dart classes except null. Null gets special treatment. So maybe that's special role for null, but also that object is the super class of everything. Maybe that's the special role it has. Uh, there's a hierarchy of object inheritance, class inheritance. Um, future and stream, these are two data types used for asynchronous stuff. You can think of like, um, making a call to a website and saying, um, you know, or to a database, um, do this long running query and, and then bring it back. Uh, if that's gonna take a while, you use a future. Uh, if you have like a real time gaming or chat application, maybe you have a stream. So you have data constantly coming in uh, that, that may have lag, um, as opposed to these sort of things. Like when we, in our Dart pad, whenever we ran uh, numbers or strings, um, we initialize these and then we print them. Maybe we run some logic on them, but it's all in line. It's all just straightforward. Um, if we have a really slow computer, like super, super slow, like the worst computer in the world, and that somehow supports Dart and you're, you're trying to run something and it takes a while, um, maybe you would use a feature, but otherwise um, these things, the human... Um, perception of how long it takes is insignificant. Um, so they're, they're done synchronously. 
Um, so future and streams, those are asynchronous, and that's the special role that they have. The iterable is interesting. This is something I discovered um, a couple days ago in my own work, um, where I was mapping over a list, and I expected it to return a list, because I was just filtering out some, some, um, some items in that list, but it returned an iterable, and then I had to explicitly, like, cast it or, you know, bring it back to, to the list type. Um, so just be aware that an iterable is a special kind of thing. So you can iterate over a list, you can iterate over a set or a map of items. <clears throat> um, so be aware of that. And that's like a little interesting behaves like, it changes the behavior of something or the return type. Uh, never is interesting as well, so apparently this is newer um, in Dart when we have um, whenever you print something, right? So we say var thing equals some string, okay, oops, there we go. So it's printing something, it's not returning a, a you know, any value to a variable that's void. But if it's an infinite loop, or um, you know you expect it to throw an error, uh, that's this new thing called a never. And you get an error because I think it notices that this actually works. Um, there might be something else you need to do, but um, it indicates that the, an expression can never successfully finish evaluating. Um, most often used for functions that always throw an exception. Okay. Um, I found this cool uh, issue for the Dart Lang site. See, I think that's for this Dart language site, uh, dart.dev. They have a repo here called site www. Um, and this was one of the issues, document the new never type. And this was just um, about a year ago from the date I'm recording right now. Okay, and so that's that, and they talk about it. It's kind of cool. Okay, dynamic, um, it disables static checking. Um, so for all these other types, um, you know, you're explicitly saying, what the, the return type is going to be, what you want it to be, what you expect it to be. Um, dynamic turns that off, uh, so you can be a little, go a little cowboy on it, I guess. Um, and here they say, usually you should use object or object with question mark. This is something you'll see with newer versions of Dart that are null safe. Uh, you should use these instead. So use this dynamic sparingly. Um, there's something else I wanted to say about that. Yeah, this line here, so coming from a Ruby and specifically a Ruby on Rails background, I really like when there's strong opinions in the language. Um, because as a programmer, I don't wanna think about dynamic or object, I just, I just wanna build a product um, or an app if I'm using Flutter that, that my users are going to love. So I can I can think about solving user problems instead of thinking, should I use dynamic or object? Um, so having having strong opinions like this um, from the Dart team themselves is very helpful. Um, or at least suggestions. Usually you should use object or object. Uh, optional. Uh, and, and again, void uh, is like when you print something, um, it's a value that's never used. You can't assign the value, the outcome of a print statement <laughs> to a variable and then use that somewhere else in your code. Um, and lastly, before we go into um, the types themselves, is that object, object question mark, and I'm curious how you would say that if you're speaking about it, um, optional object, object optional, I don't know. Uh, null and never classes, they have special roles as described in the top and bottom section of understanding null safety. So null safety is a section unto itself here. Okay, so there we, it has this big expanded area. Um, just know that that has special 
a special role that you probably don't have to think about it, but once you learn it, you'll um, be able to appreciate what's going on under the hood in your code. Um, yeah, and that's that.